that's fine. He, it was, you know, um, yeah. it's, it's always good to know who the expert is so you can go and ask questions later. Um, having said that, I'm not the expert on this topic. What a segue. We are going to talk about the UAA. I did not write the UAA. Um, it is possibly older than I am. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'm old enough that that's an obvious joke. But uh, it is one of the oldest parts of, of Cloud Foundry. Um, and uh, and uh, one of the parts that hasn't been up, you know, replaced, it hasn't ever been sort of, there's no UAV2, um, so to speak, where it got a rewrite as far as I know. Um, and as such, uh, it, it's not, um, it's great and it's stable and I would not want to write it myself um, to replace it just because there's something I didn't like about it. But when it comes to deploying it on Cloud Foundry, not as easy as it could be. And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so why you might want to run your, your own UAA is uh, hopefully interesting to the people who've decided that they would like to find out how to run it. It is, if you've got an app, at some point you're going to have users that are not you. And at that point, you'd like to know which user is which. And a lot of this functionality will be on your app, but the, the, the delegation of who they are and what their authorization is, to build all that into your app is probably a lot of functionality that is either then going to be duplicated across your other apps, um, or someone's going to say, we need to extract that out into our Active Directory system. And at some point, you're going to wish that you had not invested time unnecessarily. And if only there was a way to do it you know, users and access and account and authorization and authentication, um, and you could have done that early, you, you know, could have made a lot more progress to the rest of the, uh, the app that you're working on that is uh, more high value. Um, and so when it comes to security, you know, it's, it's also just thinking it through. If you've never had to go and do a, a high security and gone through all the different facets, there is just so much to doing application security. Um, so many different ways in which people are going to interact with your systems, both the systems that face them, whether it's mobile apps or, or, and their backends, whether it's APIs, whether it's the backends to the backends, which you might think, well, I don't need authorization for that. Yes, you do. Like other apps, who, which apps are allowed to talk to that app? How are they allowed to pass? What portion of user data is allowed to be passed around your microsystem, your micro uh, services? Um, do all apps need all data? No, they don't. So we need a model for this. Now, this talk is not a talk about how to use the UAA. There are a lot of talks about that. You will be more interested in how to learn the UAA after you've learned how to run it, your own UAA. Um, because uh, you do know that if you've got a Cloud Foundry, you, there is a UAA in your life. Every time you do CF login, every time you go to a web portal and log into something, every time you use an app that connects to UAA, you'll be taken to that page and you'll log in. Um, but we're not going to use that one. That's not yours. And if you are the admin of that UAA and you're thinking, it is mine, then I'm not talking to you. <laughs> All right, you are the owner of the platform. I am talking to people who are deploying apps and have their own uh, customer on top of that. So we're going to give you your own UAA. We're going to talk about how you can theme it. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, this experience. Now, at some level, this talk should be really simple. It should just be to get the WAR file, the WAR ball, uh, the WAR ball. I don't know how to pronounce, you know, the, um, and, uh, and deploy it. I mean, that's how we do things on Cloud Foundry. This is as simple as it should be. Uh, I made it slightly more complicated by saying you have to set up DNS, um, only in the sense that the UAA wants to know what its URL is. So, but we, we would have set up most of DNS already when we set up Cloud Foundry. Um, so a couple of nuances are, uh, when we look at it, is that um, the UAA is not uh, like a, you might call it a cloud native app. Um, it has a big YAML file that it wants in order to be, uh, to, to communicate, you know, to configure it. Now, fortunately, we don't have to pass it as a file. Fortunately, we can pass it as an environment variable, a big environment variable. But inside that big environment variable is where the database is. So we don't get to use the normal service bindings that we've enjoyed if you've ever done, you know, if you've deployed apps, you do create service, create binding, push, and, and everything's great. That doesn't work, but we have a solution to it. Um, but these are just some of the hiccups um, in deploying the UAA. Um, 
Now, if so, so if you're going to do this yourself, and I'm, and by the way, I'm going to get to a tool that I found made this all easier for me. Um, if you'd like to use the tool, you're more than welcome. It is essentially a big bash script, but it looks lovely. You wouldn't know it was a bash script, except I told you, I spoiled it. But the point of it being a big bash script is if you don't like the tool, you can just look inside and go, oh, okay, I run this and I run that, excellent. We could put it in CI. Um, but these are the sorts of steps that we are going to automate. Um, you will need to build the WAR file for yourself. The UAA team do not ship versions of the, of the, the version. Of they, they cut tagged releases, but they don't ship a product. Um, the UAA attitude, by the way, is that we should not be meeting like this. The UAA team uh, do not believe in anyone deploying the UAA except with uh, Bosch. That is their official stance. Uh, I don't think they've technically said we shouldn't gather as groups in more than four or five, but um, every time uh, someone pops up on the internet and says, hey, how do I deploy the UA to Cloud Foundry? And uh, because I'm like a tiger, I go in with, hey, here's a tool. And then um, someone from the UA team comes in like a brown bear and, uh, and says, don't do that. Do you, no, just the just Bosch. They don't say it like that. They say that our, our supported way is to deploy with the Bosch release. So we're all under the radar. All right, but it's just code, and it's just think of it as lift and shift, right? We're going to run someone else's thing, and we're going to make it work, and it's all going to be great. All right, but we do need to create a service key because um, the binding doesn't work, so we need to get that URI uh, out for the uh, for the database. But we can use Postgres or MySQL, whatever, however it is you like to get your Postgres or MySQL. All right, but then we, and then we sort of just mystically, magically create a big YAML file. Let's skip over that for the moment. It's very large, has a lot of secrets in it. Um, and this is where you, you appreciate the tool. Um, the pre-built uh, UAA actually is moderately themable. Um, you can change a logo, you can change some text, you can put some more links in the bottom. Um, and obviously it's configurable in that, what most importantly, you can set up all the clients this is one of the reasons you will want your own UAA, is you will now be responsible for setting up clients. Clients are the UAA language or the OAuth language for other apps. So your web apps that want to have, you know, represent customers or users, your other backend micro apps, microservices, CLIs, everything that interacts is called a client, and you will get to set those up. Um, so there's a bit of customization of the, of the GUI, and then we have the CLI, which we'll look at later if we're to customize it as a, as a, as a product. Um, but, you know, it is just a web app. Theoretically, we can do anything we like. Um, this is where the UAA doesn't really help us along, but old Dr. Nick will help you out here. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this, and as all thanks, this is, this is where we use the, the word hack. We're gonna hack the UAA so we can make it look cool. Um, and this idea comes from the cloud.gov team. Um, they, they, they do deploy it with Bosch, like, like champions, and uh, they wrote another Bosch release that, <laughs> it's really funny. So, so, the first Bosch release deploys the UAA. The second Bosch release stops it, opens up the WAR file, slaps in the, 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 the new theme, wraps it back up and says, all right, off you go again. And that's what we're gonna do. And it's gonna be awesome. Um, except we don't have to start it and stop it. We'll just take it, fix it, and then move it on. Um, but yeah, so a lot of uh, that idea comes from the cloud.gov team. But the idea of theming it, so you know, Pivotal for a period of time last year uh, had, a, a, had a, a menu bar thing or an advert at the top of their site. Um, this is a custom theme. This is not something, as far as I can tell, that's easy to do without sort of changing HTML. Um, and, uh, and this goes back to you and your apps. And you, you, know, you, you want to theme things. You want your experience to be your experience. So I, I encourage you to, um, to think about putting some you know, cycles into that. And I mentioned the, the process. But essentially, we're, we're going to um, iterate on a design. The process will be that we'll take versioned WAR files. And I said that the UAA team doesn't publish WAR files. I do for you. Uh, I just, there's a CI pipeline. I just put them back up on a GitHub repo somewhere. So they're just, you can follow them like you would follow anything else, or you can make your own. Um, and, uh, and so they just slots into this process. 
And then we do CF push, and you can iterate that. So if you're doing the redesign, you can just keep pushing. Um, new versions come down from the UA team. You can just automatically deploy them like you would automatically set up any CI system. Um, and I mentioned, sorry, skipping ahead of my own slides. Um, whilst you can make your own wire files from, from master, uh, if you just want to track a, a version that's coming out, um, then you can follow that GitHub repo um, with your concourse, you know, whatever versions come out, and, and uh, just pull them down. If you don't trust that my build them, and that's fair enough, um, you know, build your own. Uh, but that, re that repo has also got the, the pipeline of what's running. So, but, you know, you might not trust me, so, you know, make your own. Um, but the gist of it is, is we are just going to upload that and do a no start. We're going to do the no start because um, uh, I've forgotten all of a sudden why we do a no start. Because the app doesn't exist yet. So we need to do the no start. This is a Cloud Foundry nuance. Remember I said that we need to do the, the service key? We need to, no, damn it, why do you need a no start? Yeah, that's really interesting. Oh, well, maybe we'll come back to it and we'll all learn why we do no start. Um, when you get in front of people, you know, you get confused. So, the YAML manifest. Now, if you've ever deployed the UAA, and if you've run Cloud Foundry, you've kind of implicitly deployed the UAA. It's, it's in there somewhere. Um, you might never explicitly configure it. You just take what you get and move on with your life. Um, what's interesting, though, is that the UAA job in the UAA Bosch release, the config is different from what you actually pass down. And I don't know the history of this, of why they started to evolve it slightly differently. And so they'd have an idea of what the schema is for the app. And then they'd, the Bosch, whoever was doing the Bosch release just decided to make it look different. Um, so what we are doing, the, the, the file, and we are going to need to, uh, to, to you know, learn what its schema is a little bit. Uh, and we are going to need a, a, you know, it's an app. It's an important app. You are going to do a staging and production version because you're good people and you care about yourself and your friends and at work. And so, therefore, we will need different UAA.YAMLs for staging and production. And we're going to need a solution for that. We are going to need a solution for generating all those secrets, um, encryption keys. Uh, the, the newer versions of UAA now support uh, multi-factor authentication. So your users can, uh, you can force them all to sort of have to bring in a phone, Google Authenticator or Authy. Uh, in order to support that feature, they had to encrypt the database which means you now have this very special encryption key. And whilst you can rotate many secrets in life, encryption keys are more secret and more special than others. Um, so I don't know yet whether they've supported, I, I do, I think they actually have supported now rotation of encryption keys, which is super handy. Um, and you'll, you know, more than likely at some point, they want to uh, sort out uh, you know, backing your UAA with uh, Active Directory, et cetera. Um, now, how are we going to get this large YAML file into our app? Because we're uploading the, the .wire file, um, we don't get to upload that and a YAML file. We just get to do one, not the other. So fortunately, the UAA does support environment variable. And uh, so this, this, this is a little you know, bash command that you can run to sort of say, hey, I want this file to go in as a big rectangular YAML you know, environment variable. Um, now, this, uh, you can get very enthusiastic with this. When I mentioned you can do theming, the way you do theming of images is you base64 encode the image and put it in there. Gets pretty big pretty quickly, and that's when you start hitting row limits on um, your database inside your cloud, cloud controller, and you'll just get an error. So, if you ever do this, and it just comes back with a 501 database access error, that is entirely your fault. You've made a, 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 an environment variable that's just too big. And that's when we'd move to doing the custom theming as opposed to just changing, sorry, just so we're all on the same page. I, I mentioned we can just change some, some images. That's, that's all built in. We don't have to do custom HTML. You can do that, except we are going to be base64 encoding the images. That makes them really big. And then that goes, that means your YAML file is even bigger. And at some point, that will not fit in the cloud controller's database when we do the set environment variable. You won't, that's not the error you get. We love errors. Errors are so helpful. 
errors just tell us there's more games to be played. Um, a terrible error. No one likes an error that says exactly what's wrong and tells you how to fix it. That's, that's not what we signed up for in this profession. What we signed up for is, is just really vague mentions of something where we have to ask three people and one of them says, oh, I remember that. Um, and that's why our profession is just the best. I think it's been a while. I do, I, even if you can, this issue may turn up. I've never seen this problem turn up of having too big an environment variable until I started deploying the UAA. Um, and if I remember it, I think it's because of, of big images. Uh, why I had to do big images, I now I don't remember. But, and, um, and so now we, and so we want to move on to the next problem. And again, whether you use my tool or not, you're going to need a solution to this problem. And that is, what is the point of deploying to, what is the point of a pipeline that deploys to production? What is everything we do? We want production to be awesome all the time, or at least not awesome and no one notices. You know, if your app stops working in the woods and no one hears it, is it did it stop working? No, it didn't stop working. It's awesome. If you didn't have to send out an apology email, you're good to go. Yes, right. <laughs> All the nines, just, you know, there might be other numbers in there as well. Um, so this is this idea of what well, we want. A, it's going to be a different UAA.yaml, but we want it to be as close to the same as possible. So we, can't, we, we cannot continuously maintain two files and hope they're always pretty much the same. You want to have a template. You want to have the one that you want, and staging and production are kind of Diff, just slightly different. And we have tools for this, um, for managing big YAML files. Um, if you have had a terrible life with Bosch, you'll remember Spiff. That is not worth mentioning on a slide. I will just say it out loud for anyone that remembers that tool. Um, Spruce is another tool for merging YAML files together. And uh, my favorite is still uh, the Bosch init, the Bosch in command. I just got to like it. I liked that it failed fast. It, it told me I'd done something wrong more often than not. And so I've, I've tended to bring it with me to not Bosch places to merge YAML files together. So you can choose your favorite way to, to curate large YAML files. Um, the, I, I keep using the Bosch end. And so you, know, you can sort of say, well, that's, it's all the same, but here's the prod bit. And it's all the same, but change these bits for staging. And that leads to, at that point, you would think, well, I better wrap all this up in some sort of large shell script. And uh, in order to share it with people, I need to give it a cool name. Um, and the cool name originally was you. And then someone told me that's not a cool name. Now, you might wonder why I would call it you. Well, the whole idea of this script that you're about to see uh, came from a project called Buck. Uh, Buck was a way which we bring up uh, Bosch, like a, you know, and it stood for Bosch. UAA, Cred Hub, Concourse, because you get all of that in one VM. It's awesome. But since it's an acronym, and all I needed was the UAA bit, I called the project U. And it made a lot of sense in my own mind until other people started using it and thought it was dumb. So, <laughs> took the feedback, I took the feedback. And, um, and so I do get to, I do get to how you pronounce it though. Um, it's not QUAA, because that's ridiculous. It's QAA. It's QU. It's, it's a Q, anyway, whatever. Um, it is uh, for quick UAA deployment. And it's actually a family of, of, of tools for depending on where you want to deploy. We're only going to talk about the, the Cloud Foundry target, but the idea is that, um, that regardless of whether you're deploying like locally using Bosch locally, or uh, whether you're deploying locally to a, um, sorry, whether you're using Bosch, like micro Bosch sort of thing, or whether you locally to, a, a, um, to Tomcat, or whether you're using Cloud Foundry, the idea was that we have this one CLI and this one experience. Because, you might be wondering why I would go to such efforts, I was in the process of writing a book about the UAA. And I wanted a simple way to say the same thing over and over, regardless of oh, if you're deploying to Cloud Foundry, do this, if that, I didn't want to have to explain that. In the end, I can't be bothered writing the book on the UAA, but we still get the tool, and that is an important outcome. Um, so it's, it's this up command, so QAA up, and then we're going to uh, configure the CLI to be able to talk to it with auth client, and we'll find out our, our credentials with info, um, and so it's this nice little CLI. If you don't like the CLI and you just want to deploy the UAA, 
your own way, that's great. It obviously, it encodes you know, many ideas on how to do this. The only dependency is creating the database first. So go to your favorite uh, service provider for, for you know, MySQL or Postgres, provision one, and it just needs to be called UAA-DB. And then you're good to go. Everything else is automatic. You run this command, um, and it works. So let's see this in action. Ba -da 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 -da. And when I say everything else works, it downloads every CLI dependency. Even if you've never used Cloud Foundry before and don't have the CF CLI, it will download it for you. Don't have Bosch, it will download it. Don't have the UAA tarball, it will download it for you. Um, obviously, you do have to have the CF CLI because you've just created the service, but nonetheless, it downloads it. All right, projects, UAA. Cute. Quick, look at all those different versions. I can. It's just. All right, um, so in coming to this, it automatically added, it's actually under uh, bin again, so a lot of these patterns come from the buck project. You go into this folder, it automatically becomes active and the CLI is inside this folder. So there it is, bunch of subcommands. Uh, you will be able to find out what your YAML file looks like because you're gonna, you may wanna iterate on this to configure it so you can keep mashing together your operator files to see what your final YAML file looks like before you deploy. Um, this is for setting up uh, the client so that you can start configuring. And uh, all we do is go your way up. It exists in a different space. That's the best. Um, oh, I see, because I've already got vars. Oh, there we go. Let's just delete that. Okay, up, and we'll do route. So I know that it's on uh, Pivotal's thing, so I know I'm going to have a bit of that action. CF Summit demo. So it generates the manifest.yaml for the for what we're deploying. And is that there's no point in me asking. I hope that you can read what's on the screen. You want it bigger? Um, I understand white is a lot better. I learned that, and I could not get all the other colors on my computer to work with white. Um, and it got worse and worse and worse, and I abandoned white. And I'm just, I'm just talking through a CF deployment. There's nothing else special about this at this juncture. Um, we're just patiently waiting for it to come up. It's not going to work, because I haven't set up the, the, the UA DB. DB. CF creates service uh, in a different place. Right. Embarrassing. I told you you needed to do this, and then I didn't go and do it. Just try it again. That's what you do when something doesn't work the first time. It's already going better. Look at that. All right, so where are we up to? What happened? All right, it started that. Let's just delete that so we can feel good about ourselves. All right. Uh, so run this command, and off it goes again. And now I mentioned before, the first time you do this, it will download that .wah file. You do not need to have found that on the internet somewhere. Um, and what this means is that the way you upgrade is you just do git pull, and if there's a new version of the WAR file, it'll just deploy that. I was very patient the first time. Let's, let's. That looks good, doesn't it? It looks like it's doing things. Yeah, all right. And there we go. The rest of it is the magic of, of Cloud Foundry. Um, this project is, is, was a lot easier to do because Cloud Foundry is awesome. You know, really what we're talking about, this is in part of, uh, just an interesting example of bringing an app that doesn't quite fit nicely onto Cloud Foundry and trying to jam it in there. Um, 
and other than having to bring in a YAML file and make sure that you know, it will take that through an environment variable, it's impressive that Cloud Foundry can still take this app that really doesn't want to be on, on Cloud Foundry that much. All right, that will keep working. And you know what this is going to look like at the end? It will look like the UAA, so we can move on. Uh, when I, look, well, unrelated side topic, when I first learned web development, sorry, I learned Ruby on Rails. I was very excited to learn Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails came out at a time in our lives where uh, Gmail and Google Maps had come out and Ajax was a thing. Literally, they had given it the name Ajax. And, and you might remember this, a lot of websites, cool websites, started to use round corners for things. Well, I wanted round corners, so I decided I needed to learn Ruby on Rails. And um, so one of the first projects I thought well, I'm going to learn, to, I didn't actually have like an imagination. So I thought I wanted like my own webmail. Because webmail was terrible. That's why we loved Gmail. It was terrible. Uh, remember, I don't know if you remember, you used to type a big long email, probably angry, and you press send and it would say, oh, something went wrong. You go, well, that's no good. And you go back and the email would be gone. Oh my Lord, they were dark days. So Gmail was fantastic, except Gmail was what we call a SaaS product, and you can't trust those. So I wanted an on-prem version. Right, here we are. So I decided I would just clone Gmail because I don't know any design. So I literally just stole all the, the HTML and CSS from, from Gmail and made it look like Gmail. So proud of myself, showed my friends, and they said, well done, you've made Gmail. I, ugh, I hate you people so much. Um, and the worst part, the worst part was as a Windows developer and as pretty much just not a person who knew anything, I didn't actually know how email works, so I never actually sent email. Um, it's not embarrassing. All right. It's now doing the, you've seen this, this is just the best part, right? This is the UAA. So let's go and see our UAA in action. Oh, that would have been a lot better if it worked, wouldn't it? <laughs> we can all agree on that. Now I'm going to debug in front of people. Let's go to the top. Oh, so embarrassing. Spent all that time telling a silly story. I mean, it was a good story. Sorry. I mean, I, you know, there's a, there's a line between the font being big enough for you to see and being small enough to me to be able to see. Where is the error? Who can write? Produce. Look at all that YAML. Obviously, there's, a, there's going to be a point where I stop looking and we just move on and look at slides. And that point is now. All right. Um, and then there's the auth client. So the auth client command, um, this is where we introduce the UAA CLI. You might not have seen the UAA CLI. Uh, if you've ever interacted with the UAA before, there, for the longest time there's been a Ruby CLI called the UAAC. Um, and that is um, impressively still the supported standard CLI. The UAA team did have a very exciting burst where they actually made a new Go CLI. Um, and so it just compiled binary, take it with, where, wherever you are, take it camping, it's just the best. Um, and uh, I, I like it a lot more, and um, so that's the one we're using. Um, so, and it comes, comes with QAA. So the moment you start using QAA, it will have downloaded that CLI for you and you can start using it. And so, you, you, you know, if you've ever used and ever configured the UAA, you'll know you create clients so that apps can use them, generate the secrets, pass them, give them out, and, uh, and you can generate users. Or um, And you might wonder, what is this thing? It is just a Git repo. So you clone the repo, you go into the repo, and it starts working, it starts downloading CLIs, um, and then, you know, so now at that point, your path will have all these CLIs in there, most of which, you know, the CF one will be done for you, the Bosch int one will be done for you, uh, and you'll get the opportunity to run the UAA. Um, and so I, we went through this process um, unsuccessfully just moments ago, it's just like, just remembering, it's like watching a news flash of a disaster that just happened that you were in. Um, Trying to think if I did anything wrong. No, I did all these things. I was awesome. I was let down by computers. Um, so to go through again, what happened? We created, the only thing you needed to do was to create the UAA database, MySQL, Postgres. Um, it automatically downloads the wire file, builds that YAML file, and that's the push. All right. 
Why that's impressive or helpful is the UA.yaml file is easy to get wrong. It's big. You don't know what's supposed to be in it. When it errors, as it, I've, I mean, as I ably def showed what it looks like when it errors, um, not exactly pointing the finger, you know, to fix that, all right? Um, so I, I think this, even if you end up not using this tool, as a way to start learning what goes in this file, it might be very helpful. Um, and the tool for building the YAML is built in. So you can see that one of the examples has got the encryption keys. That's the encryption keys for the database and has an active one is for, so it allows you to rotate them. Uh, JDBC driver. And this, uh, about the fourth line down, you can see the JDBC URL. Now, the UA team has told me they are looking into making it more you know, Spring Cloud, more, more Cloud Foundry-like, so that you won't need to do that. and We'll just discover service bindings. But this is why we had to do a bunch of this work, was to get this URL in there. Um, now, all the secrets that we generated are stored locally in this folder. There's a, a state folder, uh, and we're just caching them there so that you've got them for later. So this folder becomes uh, full of your secrets. And they're important secrets. So you want to put them in a Git repo? and push them and this is, you know, then you might build CI around this Git repo. And if you're unhappy with that, let me know and we can talk about what else we can do about it, where else secrets can go. But at the moment, because I'm using the Bosch int command, it just spits secrets out onto the file system and then we put them somewhere. Um, all right, Bosch int. Bosch int is really quite nice and it allows you to take a base YAML file and then with additional files make changes, like little snippy snips. And uh, so let's just have a quick look at some of them so that you can sort of get the feel for that it's a, a learnable skill. I do not know what just happened there, but nothing good is going on in my laptop. That just got weird quickly. Yeah. yeah. Just take five, keynote. Mm -mm -mm. Decades of speaking on stage live, coming to the fore. All right, oh, for God's sake. All right, so branding example. So this is an example of an operator file, and you can't see that. Let's just think of the humans. Um, and, and it's this idea of saying, somewhere in this YAML file, cut that out and replace it with the following. Um, so just going down and changing bits and pieces. And all you do is, is add those together. The instructions are in the book, uh, in the book. The instructions are in the readme. Um, and, and once you learn what this structure looks like, you can start making your own changes. Want to set up um, like Google Apps authentication so that you can log in as starkandwayne.com or whatever yours is. There's some operator files for this. Just as I started to learn how some of them worked, I th think this one works for LDAP. That would have required me to have something LDAP-y I can point to. I may have lost motivation around the same time as I was developing this. And I uh, don't think I've ever finished testing this one. So, but if you ever get a chance to play with it and want to set this up and it doesn't work, let's chit chat on Slack and we'll make it work. Um, mostly by asking the UA team to help. And then we'll just put it in here. And this is like encapsulating some good ideas. So you can see I was trying to play with the jump cloud, um, which is like a SaaS. All right, keynote, are you ready to behave this time? Then we'll finish up. Dun, 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 dun. Don't worry about all those slides. Oh, where are we? Dun, 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 dun. All right, new theme. I said one of the cool things is a new theme. Uh, also in here is a command called customize UAA WAR. It's you run the int, and what it does is it unpacks the WAR file, steals all the templates, and puts them in your project. And now you can start editing them. And every time you do a, a, a up, a QA up, it will put it back together again. So you can iterate on that. Um, if you don't, you know, anyway, play with it. It's a bit of fun. Um, now, just a quick introduction to using it. Of course, there's the UAA, the, the CLI, um, and go create clients. It, it is uh, obviously using the UAA does require you learn how it works. And I'm not going to teach you today because of time constraints, but it is super interesting. And if you decide, I don't want to learn how the UA works, but you still want to do user management, you're just going to invent something that's terrible. I mean, you, you can't know enough to, to, to know what to invent. Like OAuth is so well defined. Um, 
it's far nicer to, to, to go with existing libraries and existing system um, and, and work with it rather than think, oh, well, that's just terrible. Look at all that Java. I don't like Java. That is not an excuse to not use the UAA. There are excuses, but that's not one of them. Um, and if, if not the UAA, find something else. But please avoid inventing this particular frame of your business. Um, it is so not worth it. Um, there's so much to be gained. The, uh, the upgrade process, as I said, I keep track of a CI pipeline that keeps track of all the up upstream things, the CLIs and the UAA versions. Uh, and when they, when they change, I change this dot .versions file. So if you want to update, all you need to do is pull down a new version and do an up. And that's that. I, I appreciate uh, your tolerance for uh, what was a terrible demo um, of something that was supposed to solve all your problems. Um, and if you have patience, we can all try and make it work together later. But uh, do you have any questions? You should be it should be entirely possible uh, because uh, you know what is what is an app? It's a stateless process backed by some state. The state in this case would be the uh, the database behind, and uh, the UA.yaml file I guess is the other half of the state of what makes it. So as long as you can reproduce that somewhere else with the same routes, then you should be or new routes, it should be good. And that goes for all app migrations. But it's otherwise a pretty good app. I don't mean it's a bad app. Tyler. You know, that is, oh, love your question. Uh, QAA. You're a champion. Do you have any questions at the back? I feel like I owe you like five questions. Uh. All right, thank you very much. I hope you had a good conference.